properties. So remember, Q is rational. So if we do Q plus Q, meaning we just take a rational number and we add it to another rational number, the answer is always going to be a rational number. If we take a rational number and we multiply it by another rational number, that will be another rational number. Okay. Now, if we take a rational number and we add it to an irrational number, that will be an irrational number. And then if we multiply rational and irrational, most of the time, this will be an irrational number. Now, there is a special case to this. Because if we did 0 times an irrational number, the answer would be 0, which is contained on the set of all rational numbers. In other words, 0 is a rational number. So there's this special case. So this is true, except when the rational number is 0 then the answer would be rational. Okay, so these, these top three, that's like true all the time. This one's most of the time true, except for if we use zero. Okay, all right. Now, um, we're just gonna do a few problems that are similar to the ones on your homework. Okay, when you're going through these, if you, um, we're just going to distribute. Now, if we have something under a square root and something not under a square root, it's similar to like if we're saying 3 times x, we just write them next to each other. We don't really combine them, we just write them next to each other. And so right here we'll do the same thing. So this first piece, 3 times root 2 is just 3 root 2. Now, the next situation, two, 2 times 5, they're both under a square root, so we actually do the multiplication. 2 times 5, it's 10, they're both under a square root, so we leave it. Now, if we can break up the 10 using the tree method, we do, but we can't do that. So that is the final answer on that one. Um, let's just try one more like this. So we have the square root of 6 times 1 plus the square root of 6. So once again, we distribute. 6 times 1 would be 1 root 6. I mean, sorry, 1 times the square root of 6 would be 1 square root of 6. And then 6 times 6 would be 36. Now, both of these are, um, it can be simplified. So having a 1 out in front is redundant in this situation, so we just want to write this as the square root of 6. Now, the square root of 36 is just 6, so we want to simplify that, and that would be the final answer. Um, if you have additional... Oh, actually, there, there's another section. I take it back. Um, so we're going to do a few more things. This time we just need to identify if something is rational or irrational. Um, so I'm going to write just a few problems and we will talk about whether or not they are. And let's see. to 9 16th. Okay, this is one problem. I know the spacing's kind of weird on that one. Okay, so we're just gonna write a Q or an I, script Q, script I. So if we have a rational number, 
and we multiply it by an irrational number and it, we don't have zero involved, we get an irrational number. So three times pi would still be an irrational number. Okay, now we didn't talk specifically about subtraction, but if we have five and we subtract a number that doesn't repeat and you know, so basically we have Q, let's see, Q minus I. This is another one, that, it has a special case, but most of the time when we do a rational minus an irrational, it's going to be irrational. The only time it wouldn't, let's see, actually, try to think on that one. Maybe it's always irrational. I'd have to think a little bit harder if there's a special case. But um, I know what I was thinking of. Um, what I was thinking of, if we have an irrational minus an irrational, that's almost always going to be irrational unless they are the same number, then it would create zero. So for example, pi minus pi equals zero so that would be a special case where it would give you a rational answer. Right here, we're fine just saying that it's always going to be irrational. Okay, right here, um, I think the easiest way to look at this one would be change this to two to the two thirds using that rule from our previous thing and two to the three halves um, and just subtract them. So we have two thirds Let's see, let's get some space over here. So we have 2 thirds minus 3 halves. We need common denominators. So we get 4 sixths minus 9 sixths. Okay. So that means we are going to have 2 to the negative 5 sixths. You can test that in a calculator, which might be the easiest way to do it. Um, or you can put it, so negative exponent means we're on the bottom. And then we also um, can write it as the sixth root of two to the fifth. And since that's not gonna be a perfect, um, it's not gonna be a perfect sixth root, it's gonna stay under the um, radical symbol, it's going to be irrational. Now, let's just pull up a calculator real quick and show you the calculator way. So I, I got two to the negative five, six, so two raised to the negative, make sure you use this negative, not this one, and parentheses, five, six. Type that in, we see there's no repeating patterns, and so we're pretty convinced that that's an irrational number. So the answer to this one would be irrational. All right, right here, it's as simple as um, the square root cancels the square, and so that would create the situation where we have a rational and another rational, add those together, and the answer is still rational. And this final one, the square root of nine would be three, square root of 16 would be four. So we're really just adding two fractions together. So it's a Q plus Q equals Q. All right, if you need additional help, come to Math Lab and Calculator.